everybody! Welcome to Best in Beauty for the month of July. This video a little bit different than my usuals because I did have a few um, kind of dud products that I thought I might just lump into this video. Also a couple of improved products. I'm excited to pass those by you to see if anybody has felt the same way about a couple of these things. Also my hair is just feeling really puffy today. I made it wavy but sometimes when I do that I like to like just tip my head over and get it all really like some volume in it. I guess lately I haven't been used to seeing myself with really full hair, so I'm liking it. But I think I'll jump in talking about bronzers here. Um, I think my skin lately has had a little more color to it, so when I pop on some bronzer, and I don't mean in the contouring sense, but in the traditional, like, just sweeping it all over the face sense, um, I feel like bronzer just kind of takes my skin to the next level. Just really like the look that it gives. And one thing that has been a real go-to lately is this um, Laura Geller Compact, and it's big, as you can see. Over on the Express channel, I did a dedicated video to this product. And it's half bronze and brighten, and then you've got this blush, and then the French Vanilla Baked Highlight that I love so much and have raved about for a few years now. And so I'm wearing all of this today. I think it makes for a really easy look. You can even just, you know, I'm not really doing a major contour today, but I did apply a little bit extra of the bronzer down there and I think it looks nice in that way also. A cool thing about Laura Geller's baked products is that I feel like they last forever. I have actually used up an entire bronze and brighten before and I'm really like proud of myself for doing that but this is kind of a cool combo and I like that the compact is actually so big because there's plenty of room for your brush to you know get all up in all those products. The blush is super pigmented. That is the blush I'm wearing today. It's got a little glow glow to it. it. probably has more glow than the highlight, the French Vanilla Baked Highlight, which is pigmented in its own right, but it's more of a highlight that I like to use to actually um, bring light to a whole section of the face and really create contrast with the deeper tones. That's a great shade for that. And then you can take your super duper shimmery highlights and apply them in a very, you know, exact spot. Actually, a new highlight that I'm playing with is from Makeup Revolution. Got it from Ulta. Um, it's in the shade Golden Lights. It looks straight up white, but it has this really goldeny kind of sheen to it. But I just apply that very targeted exactly where I want it, but I've got that French vanilla underneath that's giving me the overall brightness. Hopefully that all kind of makes sense, but that kind of brings me right into my next product. I know I can't shut up about up and up brushes from Target, but they're an insanely good deal for how soft and great quality they are. And this little guy is actually part of that complexion brush set that I reviewed um, probably around, around about last year at this time on the Express channel, and there was like an angled brush and a couple different ones, and there was this. Isn't it kind of an interesting size? I mean, look at it compared to my blush brush. It's pretty much like the exact same cut as the blush brush, but just downsized. And so it's really nice for these more shimmery highlights when you just want to go like on that one zone. You feel me on that? When placement is really key, this brush is really nice for putting it there. So again, that's part of a little set, and the other brushes in that set are great as well, but this one, um, I don't know if I initially appreciated this one enough at first, but it's really nice. It's also good if you needed a brush to kind of set the under eye area, um, even just highlighter in general, but I find I've been using it more when um, I really want to place a very shimmery highlight somewhere. Another bronzer that I've just been using the heck out of is my Too Faced Sun Bunny two tones. Um, sometimes I'll just swirl them all together if I just want quick all over glowiness because this is a glowy bronzer. Um, and then the deeper side is probably what I use more of when I really want to get it up around the hairline. Get that J-Lo forehead. I know that sounds weird but she's always got the most beautifully like bronzed up forehead and this kind of gives that look. <laughs> That's enough bronzer talk for a little bit. Let's get into my other obsession right now which is olive green eyeshadow. I am in such an olive phase right now. I'm not going to apologize for it. I am just all in for the olives these days. And I've got a few different things to talk about in varying intensities. So I'm going to start with what I would call entry level olive green. Um, I already reviewed this, did a little tutorial with it on the Express channel, but it's my um, Sunkissed Olive Duo Maybelline Expert Wear. This is nothing like brand new to the drugstore. It's just new to me within the past few weeks. It really, um, I think, gives a nice classic but soft olive look. Um, it's a great way to bust into a little bit of color in your look if you're kind of tired of just, you know, wearing brown 
brown and bronze all the time. This duo is very simple and you can use this and only this for your look. And I like how the olive has a little bit of a golden twist. The only thing, as I said in my review that I don't really like about this is the fact that they didn't give it an even split, if not more of the olive. Because the look that's kind of my go-to with this incorporates a heck of a lot more olive than it does this shade. But this is gonna be your, I just wanna dip my toe into greens type shade. And then if you're saying, okay, I'm fully committed to this green life you got going on, boom. L'Oreal Infallible. Now this is really pretty new to me, but it's just sneaking in. I just got to mention it. It's um, Golden Emerald L'Oreal Infallible. It's just money. Oh, love it. Swatched here next to the Maybelline Duo. It's more shimmery. It's more green. It's just more of a commitment to green. And I do have that um, all over my lids today. And I've also worked in one other thing that I want to mention that's green. This is my Camo Chrome Trio from Estee Lauder. This deep shade takes you a little bit more in a teal green direction, but this color here, so, so shimmery. So I added some of that, the really, really shimmery one, on top of this. I really like that result. Result. This shade too, I mean, that is serious. Look at that cream with beautiful golden glow. So I've got that around my inner corner as well. I think I used that on my swatch finger where I put something deeper and see how it just has no problem standing out. So there's those three swatch dry. And then my buddy David, who is an Estee Lauder makeup artist at Bergdorf Goodman, um, he recommends wearing this middle shade like wet or I've put it on a base and it has an even different look. There's that color applied wet. A whole other animal going on there. Right up my green alley right now so I really wanted to share those with you. You might also notice a little warmish brown in this look and I pulled that shade um, right here from this uh, Mad for Matte palette from e.l.f. That's what I've got kind of just up above the crease and just a teeny bit of that on the lower lash line too. I've got a few lip colors to discuss. I've really been all over the place with lip colors lately which is not out of the ordinary for me. I really like to try different things, but there are a few here that I think pair especially well with the olive looks. One of them, this uh, Hard Candy Plumping Serum Lipstick, which I love. I think these are so, so creamy and comfortable. And this is in the shade Anonymous. It's a really nice um, kind of nude with a little bit of peach. It looks really great on its own. Um, you can add a little dimension by wearing it with a slightly deeper lip liner, but I've worn this quite a bit lately, gotten a lot of compliments with it. Love layering it up with Milani's lip liner in Spice. It's nice to see a lipstick that's got that much creaminess and shine to it, but it's still really pigmented. You know, I wouldn't call it a sheer color. So love that. Also just these kind of earthy, little bit reddish tones are great. This is the ColourPop Ultra Matte Lip Color, and this is the shade Bumble. And I just think it's beautiful. Um, it might be coming off like extra red on camera because I'm so like lit right here. It's kind of like that Marsala color of the year type shade. I really, really like it. And I've been enjoying these ultra matte lip colors too. Um, they are a liquid lip color that fully dries down. So like it does not kiss off onto anything. And for me, I love that because when I give Belle a kiss or I, you know, take a drink of coffee, I don't see any transfer off. The slight price that you pay for that is that it doesn't feel moisturizing really to your lips. So I think your lips have to be in pretty good condition going into wearing something like this. Also a little tip with application on these, try to apply the thinnest amount possible. There's no need to like cake it up and go extra rounds around your lip with this stuff. The thinnest amount of this will feel best on your lips and it's just all you need. So Bumble is a definite recommendation here. Also love the shade called Drive-In. This was, I think, the first one I put on from this whole selection and it remains to be one of my favorites. Just a really pretty like orchid purpley color. Definitely other end of the spectrum from these more neutral earthy shades shades I'm talking about, but I love this nonetheless and wanted to give that a shout out. CoverGirl has some Jumbo Gloss Balm creams, and I have this shade called Berries and Cream. Um, get questions about this anytime I wear it because it's this pretty, like, kind of mauve pink with a little bit of a satiny finish. See that tiny bit of frost that's happening in here? I'm not normally a fan of that, but it just works for this particular color, you know, because it's kind of a more natural tone. It looks, it just looks right on the lips. That's all I can say. A little bit of a rediscovered product because I recently repurchased this and just realizing how much I love it all over again, my MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. I've got it now in the shade NC25. And it's just, 
it, there's just so many great things about this. A little goes a long way. That's one pro to it. It's super full coverage. It doesn't necessarily require a lot of setting on top of it. it just kind of goes matte and flawless and you don't really have to worry about that so much. Um, I love the pump style because you can kind of make sure you're dispensing the same amount every time. And it just kind of makes me worry less about what foundation I'm going to wear because I know when I've got this, um, I can take care of where I need the extra coverage. So love that. That's always great. Now a couple of those products that I wanted to discuss with you that I suspect have improved a little bit over time. Um, one of them, and I really didn't like this product at first. Um, I do have the full review on it uh, when it was just out in black, and it's the Benefit Their Real Push-Up Liner. And more recently, they've come out with some colors. They sent me these colors. Um, this is the one in the... I'm not sure of the specific name, but it's the green one. And I've been using this, playing around with the others as well, and I feel like the consistency has gotten more creamy. Um, at first, a complaint of mine was that it was kind of dry, and when I would apply it, it's like the product would almost ball up a little bit out of this tip. And the product, if you're not familiar, it's like this flexible silicone tip, but oops, there's some product coming out now. But the product is coming out the middle. And so you twist it up, and your cream is just coming up through. And even now, when I first use it, like just initially open it up, twist it up, I feel like the product needs maybe a bit of warming up, but once I get going, I feel like it applies 10 times better than the old one did. This is what I'm wearing as my winged liner today. Um, I think this green is just a gorgeous color. I really wanted to love this color, and I was glad that I just thought the application has been easier with these. Another product that I think has improved is this e.l.f. Makeup Mist and Set. It says with aloe, green tea, cucumber, and vitamins A, C, and E. I first got one of these like after it was launched. That may have been a few years back. And I remember my complaint about it was that when I would spray it, I didn't think the sprayer was working very well. It wasn't giving me like consistent sprays and too much was coming out like too big of particles, uh, bits, dots. I could just see it more. Like when I would apply it to my skin, I could see the dots of it. And now the mist, mm the mist is so fine. It sprays out a lot better. So this is a newer one that I've gotten and I feel like it's gotten better. Has anybody else noticed that too? I don't know. I just wanted to pass that by you because I've been all about the setting mist lately and I think this is going to work its way into my rotation because it just, it gives you this big fanned out fine mist and I never noticed that about it when it first came out, so yay. Few little duds to mention here briefly. One is the Rimmel BB Cream Radiance. Um, I'm a huge fan of the traditional, the first one that came out, the Rimmel BB Cream with the blue cap on it. Um, I think that's like the best BB Cream from the drugstore, has the best coverage, um, just applies easily, really love it. And so then I got the Radiance and the Matte. The Matte I haven't really messed with enough to give you a real verdict on it, but this Radiance one, I feel like this is just, when I apply it, I can see it just sitting on top of my skin. It does not, even applied with my fingers where you might think maybe the heat from your hand really helps it just sink in, it still just does not look right on me. It just really looks like makeup. The finish of the original one just looks really like natural, but it still has some coverage. It's just everything I would want in a BB cream, and this one just didn't measure up for me. Another thing that I was really liking using when I first got it, kept using it some more, and and started to not like it is this e.l.f. SPF 20 sunscreen face primer. Um, it says fills in fine lines and creates a flawless finish. And I do like, um, and of course the pump isn't pumping it out. Come on pump. There we go. I feel like it's kind of thin and it gives a nice silky feel, but what I'm noticing now about this that I didn't notice right at the start is that there are like little gritty bits in it. I don't know where that grit is coming from. I feel like there's a an ingredient in here that's maybe settled or um, something's happened with it where it's solidified and it's coming out in little gritty flecks that don't really mesh into my skin when I apply this. And at first I thought, okay, you know, here's your SPF 20 in the primer. Maybe that's adding a little something extra to my skin because I've already got SPF in my moisturizer and maybe even my foundation on some days. I thought this was going to be good stuff, but it just with time I haven't enjoyed it. I don't know if anybody else has noticed that. When 
when I did my Did Elf Dupe It video, I was talking about uh, Mally Face Defender and then Elf has a product that, um, spoiler alert, did not measure up to what Mally's was. And I noticed some questions about another similar product to those that Benefit has out. And so I thought I would just update you and mention that here in this video. It's the Professional License to Blot. And it's an invisible finish, pore perfecting, instant oil blotting stick. So basically no puff involved in this. You've just got this stick that twists up. It feels like a creamy kind of thick lip balm, actually. If you swirl your finger on this, you definitely feel more product coming off of it than you would um, the Mally Face Defender. And if it already has um, Dr. Feelgood, it feels like that kind of consistency put into a stick. So just consistency-wise, no, I don't feel like it's the same as Mally's Face Defender, but I'm a little put off by taking the product taking this balm and like dabbing it on my nose. That just feels funny to me that the product itself is going to be collecting the oils from my skin. And then it's going to sit on there until I wipe it off. And then, uh, not to mention the fact that when I have tried this and my nose is oily, my nose really doesn't have any oil on it right now because this is a pretty fresh application. But it just does that weird kind of collecting on the remaining makeup type thing and sort of exaggerating what makeup does remain on your skin, kind of like the e.l.f. one did. The only thing I can say is that it's cute, you know? Like, I, I appreciate the little professional detective woman. I think she's cute on all the professional products, but I just, it's not working for me. So I end this favorites video on a down note, but I just wanted to tell you about that. And thank you guys so much for watching my videos. I truly appreciate it. I love getting your requests all the time. I love interacting on Snapchat so that Thank you so much for snapping me, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.